If God could speak through balance as, he surely can speak through you. If you will be all God wants you to be, then you can do all God wants you to do. Therefore, one of the greatest evidences of God's love to those who love him is to send afflictions with grace to bear them. <clears throat> when affliction is sent, surely there will be grace to bear them. Our topic tonight is, who is like our God? Who is like our God? God who delivers his people. God who cares for his people. God who look upon himself and look upon his children and bless them beyond measure. God who has mercy on us. God of long suffering. God of patience. God of compassion. God of love. God who paid <clears throat> the greatest sacrifice by allowing his son, the only son, to die on the cross, that mankind will be reconciled to himself. Turn your Bible a moment in the book of Psalms, chapter 77, <clears throat> verse 11 through 15. Psalms 77, verse 11 through 15. I will remember. The works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonder, wonder of old, your wonders of old. I will also meditate on all your work and talk of your deeds. Let's stop here a moment. The psalmist declared that he will remember the works of the Lord because there's no one like unto our God. Have you ever remembered the works of God in your life? How you were wretched, broken, crushed, and the Lord pick you up, cleanse you, wash you, restore you back to himself. Take away the tears in your eyes, comforted you, when even you were abandoned. Do you remember the wonders of God? How he had chosen you out of many, to know about his plans for salvation. How he has picked you up from the mud of the world. Pick you up from the mighty clay of sin. Take you out from the numbers who accounted for hell and made you a heaven-bound person. I will also meditate in all his works have you ever thought or meditated about what God had done for you and I? Many times when we sit down, we only remember the evil done to us, the gossip against us, the weapons of the enemy against us, the plans of devil against us. Do you remember the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? Do you remember the Lord is your shepherd? Do you remember that he is the one who provides every need of yours? Do you remember that he is the one who picked you from where you are to a new level? Do you remember the, the, the abundant blessing he has, he has lavished on you? Do you remember how he had called you? You are mine. As he said in the book of Isaiah, 43 verse 1 and 2. When you cross the Red Sea, when you cross the River Jordan, when you cross the oceans, when you go through the fire, the Lord is always standing by your side. Who is like unto our God? Absolutely no one. Your way, O oh God, is in sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who does wonders. You have declared your strength among the peoples. Many times when you are persecuted, the Lord will declare his power, declare his strength in your midst by saving you, by protecting you, by being your defender. He defended you all this while. He has kept you from the clutches of death. He has also redeemed you from the plans of the enemy. He saved you from the fiery furnace, saved you from the raging lion that wants to eat you up just because he's God. Have you ever remembered all this? I meditated because there is no one like our God. In verse 15, 14 rather, you are the God who does wonders. You have declared your strength among the people. You have 
with your arm redeem your people. The sons of Israel, sons of Jacob and Joseph. That's what he has done. But today there are many people who never understood this. That is why in the book of Psalms 115, 115 look at verses 3 through 8. But our God is in heaven. He does whatever he pleases. Their idols are silver and gold. They work on men's hands. They have mouths, but they do not speak. Yes, eyes they have, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear. Noses they have, but they do not smell. They have hands, but they do not handle. Feet they have, but they do not walk. Nor do they mutter through their throat. Those who make them are like them. So is everyone who trusts in them. Look at what the Bible says. That tells you how much we must proclaim and declare for our God. Who knows us and reaches out to us in his mercy in every situation of life. But today, how many of us do remember the goodness of God? How many of us do remember when you used to be unemployed and he picked an open door for you? When you lack business, he opened doors for you. When you were sick, he reached out to you and blessed you and healed you. When you were broken, he confronted you. When the enemy stand before you, he knocked them down. When it seems you have been abandoned, he picked you up. And the psalmist said in the book of Psalm 27 verse 10, When my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will pick me up. When you are so discouraged as if there is no more hope, he tells you, here am I. I am your hope. God's people. Who is like our God? There are many ways no one is like unto God. One, in deliverance. The Bible said in the book of Psalms 35 verse 10. Look at what it says in Psalms 35. In verse 10. Glorious work of God. It says, All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like you? Delivering the poor from him who is too strong for him. Yes, the poor and the needy. From him who plunders him. The Lord is the one who delivers the poor, the weak. The person who has no strength, he delivers. From the hand of the, the one that is stronger than him. He is the one who will protect and keep. No one can deliver like our God. That's why when Apostle Paul was writing to the church of Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, look at verse 10. The Apostle Paul wrote something very remarkably by using past tense, present tense, and future tense concerning the deliverance of the Lord for our lives. What did he write in 2 Corinthians chapter 1? Look at verse 10. Who delivered us from so great death and does deliver us in whom we trust that he will still deliver us. Past tense, present tense, and future tense. We have been delivered. He said God is still delivering us today. And he will also deliver us in future. That is our God. That's why there's no one like him. No one is like our God in power. In the book of Exodus chapter 9. Exodus chapter 9. Look at verse 14. Concerning our God. For at this time, I will send all my plagues to you, to your, to your very heart, and on your servants, on, on your people, that you may know that there is none like me in all the earth. This is God declaring his power to the king of Egypt through Moses by saying, I will send my power, and you will receive plague, and it will touch your heart. You will know then that there is no God like me throughout the earth. That is our God, who is mighty in power, who de declares the end from the beginning. And that is why the psalm is declared in the book of Psalm chapter 62. Look at verses 11 and 12. Psalms 62. 11 and 12. God has spoken once, twice I have heard this, that power belongs to God. God has spoken once, twice I have heard this, that power belongs to God. That power belongs to God. Power does not belong to your boss. Power does not belong to any man or any woman. Power belongs to God. In verse 11 it said, 
Also to you, O Lord, belongs mercy. For your tender, for you, render to each one according to his work. That how powerful our God is. All power belongs to him. And in chapter 68 of Psalms, look at verse 35. 68, verse 35. It says, O God, you are more awesome than your holy places. The God of Israel is he who gives strength and power to his people. That is why no one is like unto our God in power. When you know that power belongs to God, you will not be afraid of the enemy. You will not be afraid of what the enemy tried to do to you. That is why I was strengthened when I saw those agents of demons, agents of witchcraft in the form of snails. I refused to budge because I know Psalm 62, 11 says, once I have, twice I've had this, that all power belongs to God. Therefore, power does not rest on witchcraft. Power does not rest on demons. But power is with our God. Thirdly, none is like our God compared to any other God you can think about. That is why in the book of Esther chapter 15, look at verse 11. Esther chapter 15 verse 11. Powerful word there. Consider our God. God cannot be compared to any other God. It says in chapter 15, verse 11, Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Then he continued, Who is like you, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? There is no other person, nobody is like unto our God. Who is like unto you among the gods? Which means you cannot compare the almighty God to any other God. Man made God. God made of silver. God made of gold. God made of steel, of wood, of mud, of clay. These things are no God. So there's no God like unto our God. Again, he said, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises. As we saw, that our God is holy. He is glorious in holiness. Fearful in praises, doing wonders in the midst of his people. Probably there's something you're longing for the Lord to do for you. If you can remember this, Lord, you are glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. Perform that wonder in my life, Lord. Perform that wonder because one of your attributes is that you are a God that performs wonders. Let him perform that wonders in your life. Perform in the affair that concerns you. Perform those wonders around you, performing in the situation that you are facing, let that wonder be performed because he performed that wonder in the land of Egypt. He proved that he is God. God never stopped being God. That is why we call him the almighty God. Unchanging changer. He changes our situation, but he himself changed it not. Fourthly, our God is majestic. His majesty. In the book of Deuteronomy, a moment. Deuteronomy. Chapter 33. Deuteronomy 33. Look at verse 26 through 27. Deuteronomy 33. 26 through 27. There is no one like the God of Jerusalem or Jerusalem who rise the in heavens to help you and in his excellency on the clouds or in his majesty. That is why we declare his majesty. We already declare his majesty. When we talk about the majesty of God, we talk about his splendor, his grandeur, his nobility, and his glory. That's what we mean by majesty. He rise in his majesty. For there's none like him who rise the heavens to help you. He rise in the heaven to help us. In a time of weakness, he's there for us. In a time of any situation, he's there for us. He rises in majesty. He comes in his splendor, in his grandeur, in his nobility, and his glory. That was the come. That's why the Bible told us in Exodus 34. When Moses said, if I have found favor in your sight, let me see your glory. And the Lord told him, no one has seen me and live. But I'm going to put you in the cliff. And I'll pass, and you'll see my glory. You'll see my glory. You'll see my majesty. You'll see my grandeur, my splendor. You'll see that. 
But my face you will not see. God's people. No, one thing with all of us is this. Even when we are praying, be it alone in your home, in your car, wherever you are, have you ever asked God, manifest your glory? Let me experience your splendor, your grandeur. Let me experience your glory, Lord, just as Moses did. Bible said Moses spoke to God face to face like a friend. Same God can do it for you today because he does. He speaks to people face to face. That's why we say how to be a friend of God. It's not by talking too much or by trying to paint your so-called flesh in the form of spiritual life. But when you really humble yourself before the presence of God, as I always say, humility is the key to spiritual power. Humility is not because you talk very gently. Humility is the attitude of the heart. That anybody who sees you know, yes, you might look fierce. You might look unapproachable. But when somebody comes closer, they know that you are a man or woman of humility. A man who has known what it is to walk with God. Just as the Bible told us in the book of Numbers, that Moses was the humblest man in the face of the earth during his time. What a statement to make. What a testimony. What will be the testimony of your life before God? What will be the testimony of my life before God? As we wait to embrace his glory. As we wait. Many times people say, we want a visitation from the Lord. Church, visitation is not cheap. Are, are we ready? That's why the book of Amos chapter 4 verse 12. O house of Jacob, because I'm going to do this to you. Prepare to meet your God. Are we prepared? We're not prepared. It's not just talk. But there is a lot of groundwork need to be done. Preparation. All the heart need to be cleansed. How much love do we find in your heart towards one another don't, and towards God? How much forgiveness do we see? How much do we show mercy and compassion to our common man, our fellow brethren? Before we talk about, Lord, I want to embrace your glory. Bible told him, Moses was the humblest man and a man who speak to God face to face. That is why it's important that we learn this so that we can get away our separate. God is ever ready to visit his people. But his people, there, we are not ready. We are only ready in the words, not in actions, not in our deeds. We are only ready in words. Next. No one is like unto God. No one is like unto God in the area of stability and strength. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 2. No one is like unto our God in stability and strength. No one is holy like the Lord, for there is none besides you, nor is there any rock like our God. Absolutely none. You know what rock is? We always say something is solid rock or rock solid, which means that thing cannot be moved. That's what we mean, but we, whenever we use that phrase, how is that thing? Oh, rock solid, which means that thing cannot be moved. There's no wobbling. There's no shaking in that thing. That is why no one is like our God. The rock, in stability and strength, he is the same today, tomorrow, and forever. He changes not. That's our God. Are we stable in our Christian walk? Some people today, they are high in the spirit. Tomorrow, they are low at the lowest end. Just fluctuating. Not a time you see them say they are stable. Sometimes they are very nice, very kind with their words. Oh, sometimes their words is quite killing. That you cannot lie with. We are not stable. It's time for us to enter into God's presence and ask him for stability of our spiritual walk. So that we don't need to be slippery. We don't need to be all the time tend to fall down. Try to hold ourselves so we don't fall. We remain stable as we move on. Allow him to be everything for us because he is God of stability. That's why he said he will stable, stabilize his people and keep us in the table of stability so that we will not be swept away by the force of darkness at any moment. Our God 
is great God. No one is like God in his greatness. Second Samuel chapter 7. Second Samuel chapter 7. Look at verse 22. No one is like our God in greatness. There is, therefore you are great, O Lord God, for there is none like you, nor is there any God besides you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. See what it says? Therefore you are great, O God. There is no one like our God. Absolutely no one. According to what we have heard. Now, with our ears, no one. He's great. That's what we see. That's all. how great is our God. No one is compared to God in greatness. He's great in every aspect, in all, every moment, at any moment, in all things of life. When you know these things, you work with great confidence that you are God. No one is like him in greatness. No one is like him in power, in deliverance. Absolutely nobody. Cannot be compared to anyone. Therefore, that strengthens your faith. That strengthens my faith. That makes us to walk with our head up. Because we know our God. That is why Daniel said in Daniel 11.32, those who know their God will be strong and do great exploits. Those who know their God, do you know him? Knowing is relationship. Those who know their God. Not knowing of. Knowing. That's what Apostle Paul said. That I may know him. You know him in his greatness. In his strength. In his power. In his deliverance. You know him. Then you are able to march on. Without fear. You are able to question the authority of Satan. You are able to question the powers of darkness. You are able to stand firm. And declare war against all principalities. Because David knew who God is. That's why he questioned, he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who had come to defy the army of God? You see it. Because he knows there's no one like God. He knew it. You cannot question the power of devil unless you know that God is almighty. Unless you know that there's no one like him. Unless you know that he is omnipotent God. Which means all powerful God. You must know this first before you dare to stand to question the power of the devil. That is why today you see many people are yo yo in their faith. When people threaten them, oh, they, say, oh, they become scared. If you know that your calling is of God, you don't need to be afraid of what people say about you. As long as you live right and continue to move forward. Who is like our God in keeping covenant and mercy? Absolutely no one. Look at the book of First King, chapter 8. 1 King, chapter 8. Look at verse 23. It says, And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God in heaven above or on earth below like you, who keep your covenant and mercy with your servants, who walk before you with all their hearts. This is very important. He declared and said, There is no God in all the heavens and the earth. God who keeps his covenant and mercy with all his servants who walk with him. Who walk before him with all their hearts. When you walk with God with all your heart, God will keep his covenant with you. I always mention this with you. Do you have covenant relationship with God? Covenant relationship requires two people or more. It's not one side, one-sided. God who keeps covenant relationship. Do you have covenant relationship? If you come with me a moment in the book of Isaiah, let me show you something very interesting. Isaiah 59. Look at what God said concerning covenant relationship which he has with you and me. In 59, look at verse 21. As for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them. My spirit who is upon you and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor from the mouth of your descendants' descendants, says the Lord from this time and forever. This is my covenant with you, says the Lord. My spirit which I put upon you and my word which I put in your mouth will not cease, will not be taken away. 
Now, you need to have your own side of the covenant also because it takes two to tango, it takes two to enter into covenant or more. That's what he said in Isaiah 59 verse 2, verse 21 rather. This is my covenant with them. That's what he said, this is my covenant. God has told you the side of his covenant. What about you? Do you? Have you entered into covenant with God? Or are you still pondering? Because you know covenant relationship carries price to be paid. Price has to be paid. Are you still pondering because you know you will never meet that conditions? Therefore, you keep yourself out of God's covenant. It's always good for us to have covenant relationship with God on a personal basis. We know through Jesus Christ, we have entered covenant relation with God that's seen by his blood. But it's always good for you to enter a personal covenant relationship with God. That is why in Psalms, I'll show you something, you'll be shocked. The book of Psalms 89. Look at Psalms 89. Verse 34. Look at what it says there. My covenant I will not break, nor alter the word that has gone out of my mouth, out of my lips. You know what God is saying? God is declaring to you and I that he is not a covenant breaker. He does not break covenant. He says, I will not break my covenant with you Neither will I alter the words I have spoken, which means whatever God has spoken for your good, God is not going to change it. You know, many of us are not steady. We are like unsteady waters. We always change our words, change everything. When we speak something, we change it in order to suit those who hear them. We always lie. Oh, many people lie. They can lie any moment in order to make impress people. But God said here, look, I'm a God of covenant. I don't change my words. I don't alter my words which I've spoken to you, and I don't break my covenant. So if you enter into covenant relationship with God, and eventually there is something happening which is not in line with that covenant relationship, it is us. God said it, I don't change my words. I don't alter my words. I don't break my covenant. My covenant remains. Whatever I've spoken to you, so it shall be, and so it is. This is our God. God's people. That is why there is no one like our God in covenant and mercy. There's no one. God's people. He doesn't change and say, well, you know, when I promise you this, the condition has now changed, so I have to change. No, no such thing. God is the same. Today, tomorrow, and forever. Hebrew 13, 8. He doesn't change. The same. He doesn't say, well, uh, I'm going to change things because you're like this. No. Is always there for us. But how about us? What part do we play in that covenant relationship? Our God is also God of righteousness. No one is like unto our God in righteousness. In Psalm 71, look at verse 19. Psalm 71, verse 19. No one is like our God in righteousness. It says, Also your righteousness, O God, is very high. You, who have done great things, O God, who is like you. Look at that. Just check all the verses we are reading. It always end up, or starting with, who is like you. Your righteousness is high. O God, is very high. O God, who is like you. That's the righteousness we talk about. Righteousness in Christ, not our own righteousness. Righteousness in God Almighty. Righteousness, that is real righteousness, not self-righteousness, that is fitting right before God. That's what he said, who is like our God in righteousness? Absolutely no one. What about in his works? Who is like our God in works? Absolutely nobody. Psalms 86. Psalms 86, look at verse 8. Psalms 86, verse 8. It says, Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord, nor are there any works like your works. Among other gods, there is none like you, O God. Even works. No work is like the work of our God. Look at the work of our God. The Bible told us very clearly in the book of Fishing, chapter 2, verse 10. It said that we are God's workmanship. Can anybody make somebody like you? Absolutely nobody. Do you know the joy we have is that you have no duplicate in the world. Nobody is like you. Absolutely. You are one of a kind. 
Absolutely. No matter where you go, nobody will be the same like you. Can you imagine how many more than almost 6 billion people in the world? Yet nobody is like you. That's our God. That's what we talk about. His works are completely different from any other works. He makes no mistakes. That's why when Apostle Paul wrote to the church of Ephesians, Ephesus, he told them very clearly in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, he said, we are God's workmanship, created in his own image. And that is why in Genesis, God declared in chapter 1, 26, 27, he says, let us make man in our own image. In the image of God, he made man and woman. No man can be like God in works. Look at the miracle he performed. Even in the land of Egypt, when all the magicians tried to imitate what God had done, what happened? They all went flat. They could not stand the original plan and purpose and blueprint of God. God proved what made him to be God. All his works, completely different. God's people. The same thing when God touched you and healed you. No man, no man will find that disease or sickness in your body anymore. It's all over. All over. Because God has done it. That is his works. That is how he does his work. That is why no one can compare his work to that of God. Because our God is different in everything. No one is like unto our God in faithfulness. In Psalms 89, look at verse 8. O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty like you, O Lord, your faithfulness also surrounds you. Look at that. Nobody is like unto our God in faithfulness. No one is ever faithful in everything that he does. When we talk about faithfulness, we talk about when we ought to be obliged to all our obligations, regardless of change of circumstance or situation. Whereby, whatever you have gotten yourself in, promised to do, either the situation changed or did not change, you still, you know that you're obligated to that. But many of us, our promises, you can't even trust. Our words, you can't trust. Any moment. Oh, I will be with you, pastor. I, you know, I will be with you. Even now, you are going to condone my funeral. That's the first person who will leave you. That's the first one who will leave you. I will die for you. I will die for him. I will go and die for him. Wait. He's the first to throw stone on that pastor. I always tell people, the words of men have no meaning. As you see them, thank God for them. Today you saw them, praise the Lord. You don't know if you see them tomorrow or not. That's human. But certainly must not. Should our Unfaithfulness make God unfaithful? Absolutely no. No, we're not. It will not. Our God is faithful. So if you know that God is faithful, that's why he said, faithful is he who call you and he will do it. When our Paul Paul was writing to the church of Thessalonians, he wrote that. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. He said, faithful is God who had called you and he will do it. In verse 24. He will do it. He will do those things he has promised you. Therefore, man may be unfaithful, but your God, my God, the Almighty God, is ever faithful. He's going to lead you from step to step. Yes, there are sometimes there are some winds and wages and rages of storms. Hold on to God. He will not fail you. He will prove himself. He will prove himself. Who is like our God in authority? Absolutely nobody. Let's go to Psalms 113. Psalms 113. Look at verses 4 and 5. 113, verse 4 and 5. It says, The Lord is high above all nations, his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God who dwells on high? Yes. All authority in heaven, he controls. That is why when Jesus rose from the dead, he said, Behold, all authority is given to me. Why? Because he received the same authority from God the Father. He didn't say some authority. All nations must bow before him. That's why he said, Give me a name that's above all other names. In the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. All authority in heaven, on earth, and on the earth. 
he holds. All authority. God's people. When you know this, you don't need to be afraid. Even when you are threatened in your workplace, you know that all power rests with God. All authority rests with him. That's it. And when you know it, you become more strong and stronger in following all that God has spoken. And never allow the devil to confuse you in any form. No one is like our God in planning all things. Turn your Bible in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah declared that all the planning, no one is like God. He plans all things. That's why the Bible says all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. Those who are called according to his plans and purposes. So in the book of Isaiah, chapter 46, Isaiah 46, look at verse 5 through 10. Isaiah 46, verse 5 through 10. All planning, no one is like unto God in planning. To whom will you liken me and make me equal and compare me that we should be alike? The lavish gold out of the bag and wear silver on the scales. They hire a goldsmith and he makes it a god. They prostrate themselves, yes, they worship. They bear it on the shoulder, they carry it and set it in its place and it stands. From its place it shall not move. Though one cries out to it, yet it cannot answer, nor save him out of his trouble. Remember this and show yourself men. Recall to mind, O you transgressors, remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from the ancient time, things that are not yet done. Saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do my pleasure. See what God said. Just from that verse 5 down to 10. How God brought about planning. How he just opened up things. Say, who can you compare me to? Who can you just bring me and say, we are alike? alike. Absolutely nobody. And begin to tell us how people made themselves fools by taking gold, building it, and making God. Yet they cry out, prostrate themselves. This thing cannot save them in their trouble. And God said, remember this and show yourselves, men. Recall to mind all you sinners. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none other. I am God and there two times he said, there's none like me. He said, declaring the end from the beginning, which means no one can match God in planning. He declared the end from the beginning, not declaring the beginning from the end. The end from the beginning, which means he knows what is going to happen at the end and he tells you in the beginning. That's our God. That is our God. And he said, my counsel will stand and I will do all my pleasure. Which means his word will stand and nothing will take it away. Nothing will make his word void. When you hold on to this, when you realize this, you press on with God. When you know that our God is a God of plan, God of purpose. That's why when he spoke to his people in the book of Jeremiah 29 verse 11, he said, I know the purpose. I know the plan that I have for you. He knows them. He knows the end from the beginning. Now, listen, church. God does not look for future, but God holds the future. You and I are longing and running for future, but God holds the future. That is why the psalmist David said, I know my time is in your hand, O Lord. Psalms 31 verse 15. I know, I know. My time is in your hand, O oh God. I know my future is in your hand, O oh God. God's people. No one is like unto our God in authority over nations. Let's go to Jeremiah. Authority over nations. Jeremiah chapter 10. Look at verses 6 through 7. Jeremiah chapter 10. Verse 6 through 7, no one is like unto our God in authority over nations. Inasmuch as there is none like you, O Lord, you are great and your name is great in might. Who will not fear you, O king of the nations? For this is your rightful due 
For among all the wise men of the nations and in all the kingdoms, there is none like you. Look at that. Who is the king of nations? No one is like unto our God. His name is great. The kings will bow. Because he is the authority over all the nations. Wherever you go, in every moment of your life, if you can realize that the Lord is the king over that nation, be it you are going for business in a particular nation, if you can realize and remember that God holds the authority over that nation, favor will be upon you. How can your father be the king of the nation and you go there like a slave? No such thing. How can your father be the king of a nation, hold authority over the nation, and you become a failure? No such thing. How can your father be the king of a nation, and you go there, become a beggar? No such thing. Look at that. In Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 6 through 7, very clearly it's written that he is God over the nation. And he is it. For none is like unto him in all kingdoms, because he has power over all the nations. He has authority over all the nations. Therefore, what you ask, that is why the Bible declared in the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, ask, it shall be given to you. Not the door shall be opened. Seek, you shall find. Why? Because your father is the king over the nations. Because you are a royal priesthood. Because you are a royal. How can somebody of the royal family become a beggar? When your father is still the king, absolutely cannot be possible. So these are things that we need to know. Who is like unto our God? Absolutely no one. So whenever you go, be it on business, remember, before you meet those your business partners, before you open your mouth to talk, remember that your father is the king over the nation. Your father hold authority over the nation. Therefore, take authority from your father and move on. And you'll see what will happen. Because you will have favor. You will see God's favor coming upon you. Just imagine... Even Nehemiah has to go to the king to ask for favor. Even though Nehemiah is not from the royal family, if he can receive favor, how much more you? How much more you? Being a child of God. As many as receive, give them power to become his children. Being a royal, you are king and prince unto the Lord. Revelation chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. You are king and prince unto the Lord. These are things that when you go, wherever you go, you remember that your father, no one is like unto him, for he is the king over the nations. Next, before we close tonight, no one matches God or no one is like unto our God in forgiveness. Come with me in the book of Micah. Powerful word. Book of Micah, chapter 7, verse 18 and 19. No one is like unto our God in forgiveness. Micah chapter 7 verse 18 and 19. Who is a God like you? Pardoning iniquity. And passing over the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. He does not retain his anger forever. Because he delights in mercy. He will again have compassion on us. And will subdue our iniquities. And you will cast all our sins into the depth of the sea. Who is like our God? In forgiveness, absolutely no one. When God forgives you, you are forgiven. God does not withhold unforgiveness. I withhold forgiveness from anybody. He forgives everyone. He does not keep unforgiveness. He does not keep you in bondage. He forgives. And when he forgives, means means you're forgiven. That is why the Bible declared in the book of 1 John, chapter 1, verse 9. It said, confess your sins, for he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. This is God. He will cleanse you. It doesn't matter what you have done. He, you are forgiven and you are cleansed. That is why, he said, but if you are forgiven, what do you mean by cleansing? He cleanses you so that the effect of that sin will not have dominion over you. Just as the Bible said in the book of Romans chapter 6, verse 14, that sin will not have dominion over you. So the effect of that sin will not affect you anymore because you have been separated from your sin and you have been declared completely forgiven. Which means, what do we mean by forgiveness? It means it never happened. It did not happen. That is what it means. When God said you are forgiven, it means those things never happened. That's what it is. 
God's people, it's time for us to know who our God is. Before we close tonight, let's go to the book of Isaiah again and see the closing remark of God's word. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. Look at verses 25 and 26. Isaiah 43, verse 25 and 26. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. And I will not remember your sins. Put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted. Look at that. God said, I, even I am the one who blot out your sin, who blot out all your transgressions, who blot out all your weaknesses and shortcomings, all those mistakes you have made, I blot them out. I will remember them no more. Look at that. This is how our God works. I told you about forgiveness. I will not remember them anymore, says the Lord. Put me in remembrance. Say, put him. Can we put God in remembrance? Let us contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted. What is that problem that's worrying you? What is that situation that be eating you up? God said, bring them before me so that I will acquit you. You know, you go to court. After all dangling and wrangling and all, whatever they have to discuss, and the judge said, you are acquitted. You know what it is? What a relief. Do you know that Jesus is our advocate? He stands before us. Devil is the one who always accuses us day and night. That's why in the book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 10, it says, He stands before our God and accuses us day and night. But Jesus is our advocate. He stands there and does what? He acquits us. Because he had taken upon himself all our sins and he said, it has been blotted out. Therefore, you don't need to talk about your past. The past is over because it is no more in the picture. This is what God has done for us. That is why we declare who is like unto our God. Absolutely, there is no one like unto our God. God's people, it is time for us to begin to know that no one is like our God in majesty. No one is like our God in keeping covenant and mercy. No one is like unto our God in works and in righteousness. No one is like our God in authority in heaven and also authority over nations. Absolutely no one. Therefore, rejoice that your God is God who rules in the kingdom of men. Your God is a merciful God. Your God is a loving God. Praise be to his name. When you hear God's word, do not harden your heart.